And uh, we are joined by Tom Roberts with the Greater Coos Valley Chamber of Commerce and Miss Childersburg, Kelsey Trice. Uh, guys, welcome in this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Good Jimmy Dell, you've never looked better. Oh, hey. I'll <laughs> <laughs> put some dye in my hair, too. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> He's going to it's, it's not quite as puffured as his is, is usually, hey. but uh, we can uh, brighten up the set today with a beautiful, uh, talented, and smart young lady that uh, fought through a vicious crowd of wonderful young ladies to grab the crown this year and I'm glad I didn't have to be a judge because it was tough competition and uh, as well it should be because uh, representing the city of Childersburg and the Childersburg area is important but even more important is what the pageants are really all about. Most people uh, think of them as beauty pageants but the reality is is that it's all about the scholarships. It's a scholarship organization yes. and the ability to pay for college is something that's just absolutely vital. I know that one of my older sisters uh, paid for college with the pageant system. Right. And that's important. So tell us about your student life. Um, I am actually currently a student at the University of Montevallo. I am a semester ahead um, so I will actually be graduating in 2020, and I will be a junior in the spring, so I'm really excited about that. As far as scholarship money is concerned, I've been competing in the organization for a little over a year now, and I've received a little over $5,000 worth of scholarship money, um, and it's definitely helped me a lot. I'm actually debt-free right now, um, <laughs> and I can definitely thank that to this organization um, a lot. So I know that as the years go on, the scholarship getting, money will continue. Getting out of college debt-free is, uh, that's tough. That's very, very tough. And at the same time, besides the scholarship money, there are other things. I've literally seen young ladies uh, grow and blossom uh, as part of the pageant system. You, you have to give shyness uh, uh, the quick boot out <laughs> the door because uh, you're asked to step up and uh, be an articulate spokesperson. Right. Now, speaking of spokesperson, one of the other facets of the pageant system are platforms. Right. Tell us about yours. Well, my platform is called Dare to be Different. It's an anti-bullying and suicide prevention program. Um, I started my program about two years ago and last year I stepped up my initiative and became a crisis counselor at the Birmingham Crisis Center. And now I'm actually training with their kids and teen line as well as their national suicide prevention line, which I'll continue to volunteer with throughout the next year until I take my next steps in their organization. Mm -hmm. I will was actually nominated as the Crisis Center's Volunteer of the Year this year, so that was a really big accomplishment for me, and I work closely with the American Suicide Prevention Foundation. Now, uh, so some of the crown holders combined the two by choosing the Children's Miracle Network right. as their platform. Uh, unfair, unfair, <laughs> not, but uh, part of the um, Miss America pageant system also requires you to be a spokesperson for the Children's Miracle Network and the Children's Hospitals right. and that's something that's very dear to me. I know a number of young patients who uh, are back and thriving in the real world thanks to Children's <laughs> right. Miracle Network. Uh, has that part gotten kicked in for you yet? Absolutely. Actually, last weekend we had uh, the Miracle Day treat where you buy a blizzard at Dairy Queen and a dollar goes to Children's Miracle Network. So I was able to be a part of that. Um, and with every year, I do see myself continuing to grow in that organization right now. I'm actually trying to become a volunteer at Children's so I can be involved firsthand and during the Miss Alabama week, we actually went to Children's during one of our days there that week. And it was absolutely amazing just to see, you know, what you're putting your time into and what this organization really stands for. So I really enjoyed being able to see um, just all that our money goes to, all our time and what this organization is really about, which is service. 
Well, uh, I've, I asked you uh, the night you won to come on with me, and you've been busy at school. So let's get back to school just a little bit. What's right. your major, and what are your long-term uh, career goals? Well, I'm an elementary education major, so I absolutely love children. Um, I would say that my long-term goal is to minor in counseling and um, hopefully work with the American Suicide Prevention Foundation firsthand on their board and staff, because you can work with children in that organization. Mm -hmm. So that's my big goal. However, you know, teaching in the school system for a few years would be nice to people say they're going to pray for me. They probably should. Well, there are it's very, <laughs> there are very few colleges that specialize as strongly as Montevallo does in uh, elementary field, especially elementary education. Right. So uh, I, I think that's a, a great proving ground for you to, to learn and grow as a, an educator and eventually a counselor and uh, making a difference. Now, um, What's the idea that you have in mind for representing Childersburg as Miss Childersburg when we start moving forward? You Have you uh, stopped and thought about the idea of being Miss Alabama and taking a year <laughs> off from school to be Miss America? Right. Um, <laughs> my mom actually mentions a lot. Um, she realized that you might have to take a year off school. Um, and I think... Uh, you don't really think about it until you're standing in the position on the Miss Alabama stage saying, um, you know, I have a horse in this race and I could really be Miss Alabama, um, so I need to start considering these things. But it is something, I think, if you're part of this organization, you understand that that is a dedication um, that you have to have. And it's something that you sit down and say, you know, am I dedicated enough to this organization to give up? a year of school and and I can tell you at this point I absolutely am because the organization that I love and that I really stand for and how awesome would it be to be Miss Alabama well at so. the same time holding the Miss Childersburg crown is important but right. also being Miss Alabama and or Miss America right wow that's when the scholarship dollars <laughs> <start> absolutely <laughs> didn't mean to leave you out oh, hey, there, guy, that's, but, that's fine that's okay uh, I know that this is not your usual seat so, uh, <laughs> the idea of uh uh, of taking a minute to collect your thoughts. A lot of folks that have never done uh, morning broadcasting don't realize how difficult this is because you're expected to be bright-eyed, bushy-tailed and getting <laughs> everybody else going while you already are. And it's not quite uh, as easy as it seems to just... Uh, sometimes you're flying by the seat of your pants and having to come up with... Uh, with things just to fill an extra five, ten uh -huh. that, uh, seconds that turns into 30 or 40 seconds or <laughs> five minutes even. So, uh, well, the I boss said I was rambling the other day. I was like, well, I'm trying to stretch out the time a little bit. You know, you got to come up with things. And, you know, it just, uh, you know, I've had, to, I've had to get myself back used to getting up early again. So, you know, but it, you know we'll continue. That's, that's a habit I've kept throughout life. I had three big sisters, one of whom uh, I was talking about in the pageant system, but three big sisters in one bathroom. If you want any hot water, you best be getting up <laughs> early in the morning. And I found it was quieter and I could get more done without interruption. But uh, it's a, a pleasure to have you with us Actually, here today. And it's a, a pleasure to know that the city of Childersburg is going to be very well represented with Miss Childersburg. And we look forward to seeing you as much as you can squeeze Absolutely. in between uh, between classes. I know that last year's Miss Childersburg, Andy Osment, uh, she was very dedicated to being Miss Childersburg, but she was just as de dedicated to being a full-time student. Right. And that takes a toll because uh, you really have to start buckling down and paying close attention to the little details of your education. Definitely, yeah. So uh, are you done for the summer semester? Um, I am. I took three summer classes and I made all A's. Um, so that's awesome. Even with Miss Alabama and, and that preparation, I was able to still uh, keep my head on my shoulders and really focus on school. And then, of course, after Miss Alabama competing in the preliminaries and winning Miss Childersburg, which is an absolute blessing. And I do want to be as involved in this community um, as I can be, because unfortunately, you know, I don't know a lot about Childersburg mm -hmm. whenever I came into this, but by the end of this, I'm hoping that I'm a Childersburg 
expert and know well, as we much have as changed, I can. We've changed the name. We're no longer Childersburg. It's okay. from now on Historic Childersburg historic because Childersburg. there are so many facets <laughs> of uh, American history uh, that relate directly to the city of Childersburg mm -hmm. that Absolutely. we're just going to unofficially change the name to Historic Childersburg. Because yeah, it is an amazing place. You know, the history there, you know, we've talked before about, you know, it was the home of one of the largest I guess the first, I guess what you call the first socio-economic uh, development with all these tribes that pretty much lived along the... Well, I like to liken it to... Uh, it was the Native American shopping mall uh -huh. for, there you go. for centuries. This was the place along what became known as the Georgia Trail where Cusa, C-O-S-A is how it was spelled, right. uh, came to be in the areas around the Coosa River, the, the DeSoto Caverns and the area where the Kaimulga Gristmill is and all sorts of things like that. What was going on is whether they were an agrarian society that grew crops, whether they were hunters, whether they they were uh, uh, makers of tools or whatever. This is where people came uh, to share their wares, to buy, sell, trade, uh, and that was an important uh, factor in Hernando de Soto. He was uh, uh, so excited to find something like that going on because the cha-ching set in mm -hmm. and he left a good contingency of uh, Spaniards and his uh, his tour of America, he left them there in that community to be a part of it and to gain the trust because the idea was that uh, his home country was going to be able to benefit from that in the long run, and they did. And uh, that's a proud part of our history. But one of the things I like to do, and I'm rambling on a little bit that's here. That's okay. Please, I'm, gonna, I'm, more, I'm being educated by the minute. I'm, I it's, love it. It's been known as a very peaceful area. Uh, the tribes that otherwise might have been enemies worked together for common good in uh, the, 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 the Coosa, the Georgia Trail shopping mall, if you will. But also during the Civil War times, uh, both Union and Confederate soldiers were welcome in our area, especially in the two historic areas of DeSoto Caverns, because both sides stored equipment and munitions and left each other and everybody else's stuff alone in there. At the same time, that was when the, the Stark Grist Mill and Bridge were actually built and used by both sides uh, to their advantage, because everybody had to have their corn milled, and so they just got along. Now, you get 10 miles down the road and all bets were off, but oh, yeah. uh, in the meantime, in what's now historic Childersburg, there's a, a long history of let's all get along. A little historical uh, thing that I learned recently, and it pertains to this area because of the Creek Indians and you know, the War of 1812, it is so, the his, history of that war is so strong here. But over the years, us Southerners, especially as Alabamians use the term, uh, Lord willing or the creek don't rise. Mm -hmm. Well, do you realize what that actually comes from? It don't mean about the creek rising. It stems from the War of 1812. Lord willing or the creeks, the call from the creeks Indian, creeks don't rise. Now, I've used that term so many times for all these years, but I learned that that's what that actually means. It's talking about the creeks Indian, hoping <laughs> that they don't rise up. And, of course, talking about the red sticks, uh, rise up and, uh, you know, Come after, come after, come after the uh, the Tennessee Volunteers that came down here. So, little little useless knowledge right there for you. That and Childersburg also played a gigantic role, though very few knew it at the time. They knew about the munitions plant, the gunpowder, and all those sorts of things, but very few at the time knew about the Manhattan Project and what took it to, uh, to fruition was the work that uh, took place, the research, and the things done in Childersburg. Yes. And uh, it's a tragic thing to have an atomic bomb, but but it did bring to a very quick and sudden end World War II. Yes, it did. Said, we don't want any more of that. Well, Tom, we got to get out here I and know. get to a break. And uh, thank you for coming in this morning. And yep. Miss Kelsey, yes. thank you. And very nice to meet you. Thank and you. best of luck to you. Thank see you, you so much. See you at Cusa Fest. Not uh, Cusa Fest, Tiger Fest. Uh, Whoops. <laughs> yes, Tiger, uh, CHS Tiger Fest 2018 at the uh, John, new John Koch Stadium. Uh, we'll be back right after these messages.